Hi again, everyone, and welcome to OT The Hockey Show. I'm Colin Zappia. The Senators are in the midst of a busy part of their schedule, and we've got an action-packed show for you as well. Over the course of the next 30 minutes, we'll introduce you to new Senators bench boss, Guy Boucher. We'll talk to the Sens players about what they think about summer hockey, and we'll also talk to you about what you thought of the World Cup of Hockey. Well, it was a great summer for Bobby Ryan and a terrible summer for Bobby Ryan. Things couldn't have gone any better or worse. With the birth of his new daughter to the passing of his mother, we find out about Ryan's emotional roller coaster over the last couple of months. Back to the line again. Carlson looks through, fires a shot, rebound, scores! Bobby Ryan is in his 10th NHL season, his fourth with the Ottawa Senators. He is a very talented winger who has great hands and a good scoring touch. But like a lot of offensive players, he would like to be more consistent. This year, he has gotten off to a good start, scoring in his very first game. Yeah, you hope it becomes kind of that domino effect. I think uh, for me, as you get a little older and you've been around in the league, it, it's not ideal to kind of have points in mind. You, you, you have... Uh, other parts of your game that I think are, are more important and uh, you named them consistency for me has been a problem the last couple of years and uh, more so now uh, I've had injuries piled on injuries uh, small but they add up so I'd like to stay healthy for a little while. I think seeing where our team can get to based on where we started uh, when you start with a clean slate which is what's important for our group uh, the entire staff's new uh, that kind of switch over can be tough but it's it's gone very smoothly we had a great camp because of it and I'm, I'm excited to I'm excited to see where our team can get with everybody's buying in right now. I'm excited with what we can do with that. Um, in the past years, I think we've had a lot of guys on different pages, um, albeit because they're chasing records or they're, they're doing something here or there or playing for contracts. Uh, this year we came in and coach let us know right away. None of that matters. Uh, all that stuff takes care of itself. And you know that as you get a little older, but uh, having a young team can get away from that. Coach has pulled us in the right direction pretty quickly. With the start of every new season comes a fresh slate, something that Ryan looked forward to. His summer was filled with emotional highs and lows. Bobby and his wife welcomed their first child into the world with their daughter Riley. He also had to say goodbye to his mother, whom he was extremely close with as she passed away from cancer. I think the word we're kind of using is a roller coaster. You're on, you're on such a high and then it, it gets pulled out from underneath you a little bit. and. Uh, uh, all of a sudden you're, you're planning for their first meeting and uh, it's also their last. It, it, uh, it was a horrific ordeal to go through, but uh, uh, when we look at it, we look at it like they got two days together and uh, uh, she got the holder and there's pictures and um, those are memories that I'll keep that my daughter Riley won't, but uh, at least we can remind her in some way of my mother. For anyone who knows Bobby Ryan, you would know he had a very difficult childhood. His story is well documented. He was very close to his mother, and he wished he had more time with her. It, was, uh, it came out of nowhere and uh, no preparation. Just uh, They gave us 14 days, and it turned out to be about 12. So it's uh, uh, never imagined it happening, coming, right? You're never, you're never prepared. Ryan feels very fortunate for the time that his mother and Riley had to spend together. Riley has changed Bobby Ryan. The first time dad has had his life turned upside down, but for the better. Yeah, you uh, you learn to think a little differently. Things change pretty quickly and uh, both my wife and I are only children, so we're learning how to be a little more selfless when it comes to uh, our time and uh, and your energy and what you're focusing on. But uh, we were ready, we've been prepared for it for a while and uh, uh, I don't wanna say I changed overnight, but I changed dramatically over the summer and, uh, and I think all for the better. With Bobby Ryan's entire life revolving around hockey, surely he would like to see his daughter following his dangling footsteps. Actually, maybe not. I severely hope she does not. <laughs> I really, really, uh, uh, don't want to spend time at the rink when I'm done. I'll play men's league and beer league, but uh, if, she, if she, what she wants to do, then I'll support her in that capacity, but uh, I really hope she focuses on other things. The players on this team have seen their share of head coaches come and go. For Ryan, he hopes for some more stability this year, and he knows that the players have to buy in. 
Uh, it's you know it's funny I I've played for four now, uh, uh, Guy being our, my fifth and uh, over ten years. So that's a co new coach every two years, whether you're switching teams or whatnot. But uh, I'm looking forward to building some stability for a little bit here with Juan. Um, I feel like in the past we haven't quite rewarded the coaches that we've had, and uh, now's an opportunity again with a clean slate to do that. When Bobby Ryan moved to Ottawa from Anaheim, he knew his life was going to change. Anaheim has a great hockey fan base but it's nothing compared to being an NHL star in a Canadian city. Yeah, I think we're comfortable. You just have to be comfortable in the fact that the anonymity factor is uh, uh, is not there. There is no anonymity, excuse me. Um, so you, you have to be prepared that eyes are on you everywhere you go. And uh, uh, you're not being judged because every fan that I've had an encounter with has been awesome. But uh, at the same time, it, you almost don't let your guard down and you build a little bit of a wall. And that's, that's part of it, but... Uh, uh, again, I haven't had any kind of uh, bad encounter. Uh, everything's been incredible, but you get used to it. You, you just go grocery shopping at night and uh, and avoid malls. <laughs> For OT The Hockey Show, I'm Dave Davies. Team Canada hoisted the championship trophy at the recent World Cup of Hockey. And while that's a very proud moment for our country, some were not thrilled with the format of the tournament. We went to you, the fans, to find out what you thought of the World Cup and whether they should host it again in this week's You Said It. This week on You Said It, we're wondering what fans, and this one is clearly a fan, thought of the World Cup of Hockey. What were your thoughts in general of the tournament and, and how it turned out? Well, who doesn't like the way it turned out if you're Canadian? Um, personally, I was a little underwhelmed. It was fun to see all the big stars playing, but it's not really a competitive series because Canada wins every time. And when a, one team wins every time, it's not much of a competition. So it was fun. But uh, the game that I saw was one of the... Uh, uh, exhibition games for here against the US and it was it was pretty entertaining there's a lot of talent on the ice but like I said a little underwhelming overall you know what it was pretty good I guess from an exhibition standpoint I live in Toronto now so um, we got to sit front seat with every NHL player only thing is it was a little expensive all right $400 a ticket was a little pricey yeah otherwise it was great it's great time seeing people all over the city yeah it's fun Olympic is like a, a dream for all players, obviously, and the World Cup is too. But uh, I say I like I like the Olympics because you get more teams and uh, more nationalities and all that. Oh yeah, it was awesome. We did great. And what, yeah. what kind of stood out for you for the for the entire tournament? I thought the uh, the North American team, the Young Guns. I mean, I thought that was for um, you know a team that hadn't have a time to prepare a whole bunch. They they did really well and just exciting. I mean. To be honest, with you, I wasn't really, really excited about it until I saw a couple of their games, and then I kind of got, got into it for sure. So it was, it was exciting that tournament. I'd, I'd watch it again for sure. I thought Team North America was co very cool, um, exciting, fast. But I don't blame Connor McDavid saying he wants to wear the Canadian jersey four years from now, even if he could be Team North America. Um, it's a one-time thing for players, I think. But it's cool to have that along with the Olympics. Seeing them play together, it's good hockey, so can't complain. Yeah, a little bit of World Cup of hockey. I, I think for me, the best was the preseason game, the pre-tournament game here in Ottawa. That was fun. Uh, Canada did well, and uh, but it was great to see Canada win, of course. And uh, it great, it was a great warm-up for uh, for sense hockey, I think, so to speak. On May 8th, Guy Boucher was named the 11th head coach in modern-day Senators history. He spent parts of the last three seasons coaching in Switzerland, coincidentally against his now assistant coach, Mark Crawford. Elizabeth Zogalis caught up with Boucher to talk about his new life in Ottawa and his return to the NHL. I am now joined by head coach Guy Boucher. Guy, uh, welcome back to the NHL. I know you've come all the way over from Europe. How does it feel? <laughs> it feels great to come back. We've, uh, as a family, we've been away for almost seven years. Uh, when you look at uh, our stay in Tampa before and in Europe, so 
Uh, seven years to be away from home was a great experience. It was a great adventure for the kids, the family, uh, for me uh, professional-wise. But I think uh, when you come back home, it, it's, it's home. And uh, here, here, I think in, in the Ottawa region, uh, it, it's, it's special because I feel that people are... Um, First of all, you get bilingual, you French and English mixing so well. It's close for us also uh, because we got family uh, in the western part of uh, Montreal. Uh, so it's pretty close to here. Uh, my wife's got her best friend living in Ottawa and so on. Uh, and, I, and I just think people have been so welcoming and, and uh, so helpful in our neighborhood that it's, it's been just a really terrific experience up to now. You, you talk about languages, uh, especially here, it is very bilingual here, but in Europe, I mean, kids are known to learn five, six languages. Is that something that was easy for them when they came over here? Did they already speak French? I imagine you speak a little French at home? Yes, we speak French at home, but well, <laughs> we try to speak French at home because the kids are always answer back in English now. You know, they've learned to read and write in Tampa. It was in English. Uh, I think when we left Tampa, the French was... Uh, very minimal, let's say, and so when we went to Switzerland, we had the chance to put them in French school, so they learned to write it and speak it. Uh, so that was good. My wife speaks uh, five languages, so uh, she, half her family's from Holland uh, in Europe, so she's uh, she's very very big on languages. Uh, so our kids now they they uh, they've learned uh, I'd say a, a good part of German to be able to converse uh, a little bit and um, and uh, I didn't learn anything that was awful uh, but I know French and English and the kids know French English and, and some German now so uh, if they follow if they follow their mom's lead they'll know a few in, in the next years. And you mentioned Tampa. Since coaching in Tampa and now coaching in the NHL, have you noticed a major difference in, in the style of play in the NHL? Uh, well, the one thing is uh, that I tell people, first of all, the neutral zone is really jammed now more than ever. It um, doesn't matter which system you use. The, I think the five players are very connected, so you could do you could play against a 1-2-2, a 2-1-2, two, two, a 1-1-3, uh, one, 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 a 1-3-1. One, one. I, mean, I think it doesn't really make any difference in the sense that it's just jammed. Um, players are, are really coached by coaches now who have spent a long time on, on systems. Uh, two, the defensemen are very, very active more than ever. They're active on the four check, they even go deep in the offensive zone. Uh, they're active on breakout, it's on transition. Uh, there's a lot more permutation in the offensive zone with the defensemen, so it's much harder to defend. Uh, and, I, and I think that's probably the, the biggest adjustment. And yes, it is faster. It's faster every year. I think the new young guys come in and the standards change every year. Um, it's, the gener it's the generation of the machines, I call it. You know, I was really lucky. I, was, I coached Crosby in the past and Stamkos and Tavares, uh, whether it was on my teams or Hockey Canada. And, and you look at the new guys that are coming in, uh, you know, the McDavid's of this world and the Matthews, and they're just, they're not just good players with skill. They've got so much speed and, and uh, they're, they've been trained so hard and so well since they were so young uh, that they come in ready more than, more than ever, I think. So in that respect, the game is faster than before. Uh, but it's 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 uh, harder to get through defensively because the teams are so well prepared defensively. And going forward, you were you were brought in. A big reason you were brought in actually was uh, your style of coaching. You're very hard on the guys. Uh, what are you what are you expecting for the rest of the season? And how do you feel like your players have adjusted to your style of coaching? Especially someone who's coached in Europe, you coach in the AHL level, you've coached the NHL level. Uh, you know, just summarizing it up. What are you expecting this this year? Well, right now, without expecting anything, uh, I love the buy-in. Guys are buying in. Uh, they're preparing hard. They're, they're giving me everything they've got. Um, and, and I like the leadership core, uh, the way they've responded in, in all kinds of instances, including the training camp. Even Eric, not even being here, uh, wanted to be here on, on, uh, on Skype with the team when I, I gave the first speech and making sure he's there the day that he could, you know, cutting his... Uh, his uh, vacation short after the uh, the World Cup, uh, and since then, I mean, he's played terrific. But what I liked, he's really, really been a great leader for us. And it's the same with Fanaf and and the Kellys and and Turris and, and Smith and and those guys. Uh, they and Neil, you know, they've shown uh, not just a buy-in, but they've shown that they want to be ahead of the game. They want to they want to lead, and uh, I've been impressed by that. Okay, great. Well, good luck for uh, for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you.
How's this for a hockey resume? Two-time Stanley Cup champion, two-time Olympic gold medal champion, a World Junior champion, a Norris Trophy winner, and now World Cup champion. In this week's Out of Towner, we talked to Drew Doughty about representing Canada at the recent World Cup. We've heard this question a million times already, but what is it like every time you put on the sweater and get to play for Canada? Uh, it's it's amazing. Um, it's a, it's a feeling you really can't describe. There's just so much pride and you know, so much honor putting that jersey on, and, and you know to this day I still get kind of chills when I put it on. Um, you know, I grew up watching Team Canada play, whether it's World Juniors, World Championships, uh, Olympics, and uh, never really had the feeling that I could ever put that jersey on. And you know, so when you put it on, you you really appreciate the fact that you're on this team. When you think back to the very first time you got that call, not for this tournament, but the first time, what, were you shocked or was it expected and how did you feel at that uh, moment? Yeah, um, I, I was definitely shocked. I was, uh, it was the 2010 Olympics. Um, I was a young young kid at that time, 19, 20 years old, and I, I never expected to make that team. And uh, for some reason, they saw a good fit in me to be there and uh, I ended up having so much fun and you know got to meet so many great guys and obviously we won in the end and uh, yeah it was one of the best uh, hockey experiences of my life. Obviously you've proven yourself over the years and you keep on getting called back now that you're an old guy um, <laughs> what's it like being with the young guys and what are you trying to pass on to them? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still probably one of the youngest on the team. I'm, I'm only 26 but um, yeah no I don't I don't pass on much information you know I just for a guy like uh, Jake, who um, I have playing with me in LA, you know, just tell him keep it simple, you know, play your game, and then just have fun. Uh, well, you, a lot of guys come here and they're a little nervous; they don't want to make mistakes, and they want to find their spot in the lineup. And you know, it's not about that; it's just about coming here and uh, having fun. And wherever you fill in and in, in your spot, you just got to do the best job you can. You say, you know, talking about playing in LA, and obviously LA has become a pretty good hockey community. What's it like though being in Canada, playing the game in Canada for Canada? Yeah, uh, I don't get that chance uh, to play in Canada too often where, you know, the fans are actually cheering for me. So uh, it's going to be amazing um, having, uh, you know, obviously home ice advantage for our team and having our fans behind us. You know, Toronto's going to be absolutely nuts. And, you know, I can't wait. It's going to be a ton of fun and, and they're going to give us a lot of energy. And um, uh, yeah, I just can't wait. Okay, so I got to ask about the beer too. Will it come off at the beginning of the tournament and then no, you let it grow? No, the beer doesn't leave. Um, I look I look funny without a beard in my opinion you know I got the big round face so um, I keep the beard to kind of make it look a little narrower I think it's doing its job <laughs> thank you spent the last two uh, seasons in Switzerland now you're back in the NHL having spent a few years here before but uh, after playing two years in Europe what are some of the major adjustments you found you had to make uh, this year going forward into the NHL? I'm um, definitely getting used to the size of the ice again I spent two years you know, in Switzerland and you know the ice is really big over there it's it's more of a puck possession game and maybe, maybe a bit more perimeter so you know, I was just happy to get a lot of preseason action kind of get used to the NHL feel again and just learning to make quick decisions with the puck. I noticed you did get a lot of action in the preseason. You think that helped? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the first few games, I thought they were kind of challenging. It's, there's not a lot of space out there, and you just got to get you know, readjusted as quick as possible. And I think every day, I'm, every game, I'm feeling better and better. A lot of players have their expectations about new head coach Guy Boucher. You've played under him before in Tampa as well in the AHL. Uh, what, uh, were you happy to hear that you were going to be playing under him again? What are some of the things you were expecting from him? Because that you already knew, I guess. That was nice. Um, coming back to North America, it's, I think it's nice to be familiar with something when you go to a new team, uh, whether it's players or coaches. So um, I, ex I knew what to expect a little bit. Obviously, as a coach, he's always learning and you know, uh, learning, learning new things and getting, getting new systems. But uh, for the most part, a lot of it's kind of similar, and uh, he has the same approach. And now coming back to the NHL, uh, you, your line with uh, Pajo and, and Chris Kelly has been one of the most consistent ones so far. Why do you think that is? Uh, we're just three guys that keep it simple and work hard every night, and uh, we just know where each other's going to be on the ice because you know, we know one guy's going to be the net and just one in the corner too. So uh, we just play a simple game, and I think when you have you know, three guys like that, it just kind of makes the game simple and it's e easier to play. Now the, th the three of you guys have all played wing and centerman. Do you think that uh, that helps you switch back and forth? Do you think it helps when you've played center before and you have to move back to the wing? 
Yeah, I think we're all three guys that can move around a little bit, and I think that's good to have. Um, it's nice to have versatility with, with your forwards, and you know, some nights we dress 11 forwards, so a lot of guys are being juggled around and playing different positions, and I think uh, you know, to have that as a player, it's, it's a good strength, and uh, we don't mind being juggled around. In 82 games, obviously it's a long season. You guys are only four games in at this point, but uh, I got to ask you, what uh, what do you have going forward for your your own expectation and and the teams? I know last season was disappointing. No one really wants to bring up last season, but going forward, what uh, what are you hoping for this team now that you're new to it? Um, obviously, it's, it's it's always make the playoffs. You know, we, that's what we want to do. But uh, it's, it's kind of like so far away right now. We're just focusing on taking steps forward and. Uh, just want to keep building and make improvements every game, and and uh, you know good things will happen for us. All right, thank you. Good luck. Thanks. The debate on whether or not to enroll your child in summer hockey is an ongoing one, so we decided to talk to the pros. Did you play summer hockey as a child, and would you enroll your child in summer hockey? Here's this week's Ask the Sens. I didn't play summer hockey. I played lacrosse uh, growing up. Uh, you know, I think that's a big debate now with uh, year-round hockey. Um, I think if you ask most most of the guys that, that play in the NHL, they would be against playing you know year-round hockey. Doing anything year-round is uh, I don't think is is good. You know, there's a reason you get some time off school, and I think you need to take time off uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, you know, doing something. For 12 months of the year just I don't think is, is the best thing. I played two years of spring hockey or summer hockey whatever it was back then. Uh, I did it because all, all my buddies were doing it. Um, you know the, the instant I didn't want to do it my parents didn't make me do it which I really appreciated uh, and then in, in my opinion I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, take, 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 take the summer off, uh, you know play other sports, work on being a well-rounded athlete. You don't want to just be a hockey player you want to be an athlete first so uh, in my opinion take a pass on it. Yeah, yeah I played uh, just on a tournament team. We didn't have, we had a couple practices a year, but went to a couple tr Toronto tournaments. And uh, other than that, I played a lot of lacrosse growing up. So uh, that kind of took up most of my summer. I did, but I also played a lot of other sports. And I think that's the one thing, as far as advice I'd give, is just make sure you're playing as many sports as you can and have fun with it. Obviously, there comes a time when you need to pick one over the other, but I think the longer you can kind of play a variety of sports, it'll, it'll even help in hockey too. So. Um, I played baseball growing up and soccer and um, basically any, any sport at school I could really get into, I, I, I tried playing too. Yeah, I think you know, anytime kids can get on the ice is, is great, but uh, you know, I always enjoyed playing other sports growing up, I played baseball and soccer and, and uh, just about anything. So uh, I try to get out and stay active when I can and uh, you know, I'd, I'd suggest that to most kids out there. Yeah, definitely. I did as a kid. It was uh, you know, a lot of fun. Uh, but at the same time, you want to be able to play, uh, you know, a variety of sports, kind of get your athleticism, and then, you know, once you get older a little bit, try to, you know, whatever you're kind of the best at, go from there. So, uh, you know, I do recommend playing summer hockey, but at the same time, you want to, you know, play a double, couple other sports as well. I think it's a fine line. If a kid wants to skate, go to a couple of hockey schools. Um, you know, me, I, I played one year of summer hockey, uh, I think when I was 13, but... Um, you know, it's it's. I think it's important to, to have time for other sports too, baseball, whatever, swimming. Um, I think it's it's changed here a bit over the last few years, definitely. But um, you know, it's not a bad thing in in certain quantities. So I played summer hockey, um, uh, and and yeah, if if you like hockey and you want to play summer hockey, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I would recommend playing another sport as well, though, and kind of just getting a taste of everything and. and it also kind of uh, rounds you out athletically. To, uh, whether you choose hockey in the long run or not, it helps you. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate it. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of OT The Hockey Show. In our next broadcast, we'll catch up with Chris Kelly, who's making a homecoming of sorts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Right there.